Hi everyone and welcome to the February edition of Drone Blocks Up in the Air. My name is Clinton Evans and I'll be your host today. We have a very cool episode today with lots of cool things to show you. That being, the teacher spotlight highlights something very cool that a teacher is doing. Then I'm going to show you something awesome that happened at the Super Bowl. Then I'm going to show you some new updates to the Drone Blocks curriculum. Then we're going to look at the new iOS and Android Drone Blocks app update. And then we're going to look at the challenge from January and see who got to fly in a very cool square. So let's dive into it. The latest educator spotlight on our blog site covers Joe Miller from Northridge High School. It is such an inspirational read. Find out how Joe transitioned from a social science teacher to a computer science teacher, the new computer science department, and the students are able to work with a drone blocks quadruped robotic dog. I think that is just amazing. Now, what also stood out to me that was really cool during the read, find out how the students came up with the name for their robotic dog. It's very cool. And there's also a video of a student sending JavaScript code to the robot dog. Turning off the remote, JavaScript. Dog does a little dance, which is very cool. And speaking of dancing, did you happen to catch Jason Derulo's Super Bowl performance? The performance featured robotic dogs doing a dance. It is awesome. These dogs dance along with other dancers on stage. And I think the choreography and the planning involved is just unbelievable. So you've got robot dogs dancing. They do a little sit up at the end and they all comes together in a great performance. Moving on to the drone blocks curriculum. We have two lessons to highlight. February saw the release of Mark Kircher's GeoGebra meets drone blocks lesson, which is such a great lesson. The first three are up ready for you to view. Mark is a great teacher, been teaching for over 27 years. I really enjoy how enthusiastic and passionate Mark is. Working with him was great. He could deliver the content in easy to understand bite-sized bits. And the lessons are broken down into two sections. You first have your GeoGebra, where you do your geometry and you plot your points. And then we go and we apply that knowledge in the drone block simulator. So that's definitely a must-see if you haven't seen that already. There's some great video content there, as well as accompanying PDFs for each lesson. Now, I also want to highlight that we have some great activities in the Databot course. So if we go down to the Databot course, you will see some very cool lessons. And the one that jumps out to me is the Volcanic Vistas. This is such a cool activity. You can download a 3D printable frame for your Tello drones that you can attach the Databot onto the drone. And then what happens, you set up some volcanoes and one of them is active. So you get to follow along and figure out how to do that with baking soda and vinegar, spoiler alert. And then what you do is the students will fly the drones from bag to bag, looking at the CO2 reading, and they'll be able to tell you which volcano is active based on the data. It's so fun watching these students figure this all out. And what I also appreciate is that the different STEM and education standards are listed in the Volcanic Vista worksheet. It's very cool. If you don't have any data bots in your classroom, head on over to droneblocks.io slash shop and check it out if you want to get some. So that takes us to the end of the curriculum section. Now let's look at the latest Android and iOS update. We have now introduced a pre-flight check. So what that means is that if there is a issue with your code, when you launch the mission, it will fail the pre-flight check. So if we have a look here, I'm going to attempt to fly forward three inches and you'll see that it fails. It says a distance of three is outside the range of 8 inches to 197 inches. And for those using centimeters, anything outside of 20 centimeters and 500 centimeters will fail the pre-flight check as well. So this is going to help eliminate our drones not flying very well by doing pre-flight checks. It is so helpful. And lastly, let's have a look at the square. So in the community forum for January's challenge, we had Mark from our GeoGebra course submit a square so let's check it out let us launch the mission and see what the square does so the drone takes off flies in a square that's pretty cool oh look at that it's made an eight or a bow tie depending on which way you look at it oh it's made another flag three leaf clover four leaf clover well done mark that is indeed very creative so my february challenge for you is to fly in a heart or make your drone fly in a dance. So whether it's a left, the right, the waltz, whatever. So you can submit your code to the February Up in the Air community post. There's a link in the description below. And this takes us to the end of the show. Just before we go, I just want to give you a sneak peek at the next big drop that's happening on our curriculum. There is an introduction to Python coming your way that starts with the expectation that you've never even heard of Python and will have you 
being able to follow along with our drone blocks python courses within 14 days very small bite-sized exercises not a lot to do each day and over 14 days you'll be able to build something very cool with python it is so exciting for me to be able to introduce you to python so that's dropping very very soon so thanks for watching if you enjoyed watching this or you learned something new don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the drone blocks youtube channel and i'll see you next month so until then keep the drones in the air your students engaged and have fun